one of the issues that I'm having other than getting out of bed and um, changing my clothes is that if I want to move around the house and put on a light, like in this case, if I were to put on this light switch, I have to go like this and it's painting, but I'll be able to move it once I get there and then I'll have to assist my hand to bring it back down. On October of 09, I was in the process of going downtown to come back up and take my daughter to lunch. And uh, it was raining terribly hard and I hit the hydroplane. And by doing so, my car shifted to the center of the meridian and flipped about five times. And they found me in the back seat. My neck was broken, face was fractured. Uh, apparently I was in a coma for four weeks. As a result of that, I, um, I end up with rotary cuff damages on both hands where I couldn't use my hand to a full extent. You were diagnosed with a frozen shoulder? Yes, sir. Okay, and you were unable to bring your arm up? Absolutely. You had lost a lot of the function of your shoulder. A frozen shoulder is a puzzling condition. People between the ages of, of 40 and 70 get it. Its path is idiopathic, which means they don't know what causes it. It comes on mysteriously. The patient is unable to bring their arm up alongside their head. They only have about 90 to 120 degrees of what we call abduction. And almost every frozen shoulder patient complains of not being able to sleep. All right, so slowly let's go ahead and abduct the arms, bring them up over your head. I haven't slept in a month, to be honest with you. I roll quite a bit. I toss back and forth. Uh, I wake up about every hour and a half to two hours. So bringing it up alongside your ear is very difficult. It's not going to go. The condition's been in the literature for about 200 years and nobody's ever been able to figure out what exactly it is and what causes it. I've took therapy for about three months and it didn't really actually help. They do physical therapy that makes them worse, that makes them hurt more and sleep less. Also, a lot of patients get the injection, which is ineffective most of the time. It keeps getting done, but it's not fixing the problem. And I thought to myself, well, it may be a weakening or a malfunction of the spinal accessory nerve. And now I have this paradigm that I built in my head that the skull and the spine support a part of the nervous system that runs the shoulder. When he saw me for the first time, he said, you have a frozen shoulder, I can tell you, your head's crooked. I'm like, really? I didn't know who this man was. And he said, show me. I postulated that, okay, if her skull somehow wasn't functioning on her first cervical vertebra, that that possibly could cause some kind of malfunction in the spinal accessory nerve. And if I could reduce that or fix that or get that positioning right again for her, possibly it would affect that nerve and she would get her arm function back. I stopped, I looked at her and I said, what I thought I would feel, I feel. And now I wanna go ahead and reduce this. She says, go for it. I'd never been to a chiropractor before. I didn't know what to expect. It was something foreign to me, but I trusted him and I'm so glad I did. And go ahead and bring the arms up, see if they'll come all the way up. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah, I'm not kidding. This thing that had been around for so long that people knew nothing about was being resolved with this chiropractic adjustment. need to know about this. They really do. It's so simple and so non-invasive. It needs to be out there.